who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. Hear that clearly, folks. Another scripture says, we are workers together with God. Mark talked about the work of missions. Let me tell you, being, a, being one of our global workers, what these folks go and do is not easy. It's hard. It's hard work. And they need people with them. It's an African proverb that says, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. And friends, we need to work together as churches in the PAOC around this purpose of mission to take this ministry of reconciliation and take it to the world so that people will become new creations in Christ. Let me tell you about the challenges we face. Every one of those red dots represented there is what we call an unreached people group. People who have never had the opportunity to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's not that they've, had it, that, that they've said no to the gospel. They've just never heard. Notice India particularly. The greatest number of unreached people groups are in the subcontinent of India. That one country alone. 1.2 billion people. Most of them have never heard about Jesus. You've heard tonight about Europe. And you say, why are we sending missionaries to Europe? Well, friends, they're football crazy, but they aren't Jesus crazy. Look at Spain, France, Italy, Greece, Poland. Less than 1% of the population are followers of Jesus Christ. Less than 1%. You can go to literally hundreds of Spanish towns, and there is no gospel witness in those towns. There's nobody to tell people about Jesus. Now, they may not be the poorest of the world. They not, may not be people who, who have the same needs as people in India. But let me tell you, the same need of the gospel of Jesus Christ doesn't matter if you're rich, poor, or in middle income. You need Jesus just the same. And so we're sending some people to Poland, and we're sending some people to Spain, and we're sending some people to France because they need the gospel in that part of the world. And here's another priority for us, is the next generation and youth of our world. If you read that, you'll notice that all those red countries, that 40 to 50% of the population is less than 15 years of age. You say, why are we still sending people to Africa? Well, the truth is every 15 years, there's a whole new generation to be reached. There's a whole new generation that keeps coming up that needs the gospel of Jesus Christ. And there's literally hundreds and hundreds of kids that because of things like HIV, AIDS, have no parent. And so we're there because that's a priority. We prioritize unreached people groups. We prioritize places where the gospel has not penetrated with much success at all. And we're trying to reach the youth of the next generation. Because the best time to reach somebody for Jesus is when they're young. They're much more open to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Those are our priorities. And we are therefore Christ's ambassadors. As though God were making his appeal through us. You see, God could just shout it from the mountaintops himself, but he didn't choose to do it that way. He said, I'm sending you. And it's your job to go and do that. And so we reach lost people wherever they are with the transforming power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I was in Indonesia earlier this year. Indonesia is the largest Muslim country in the world. And yet in the midst of that, there is a very strong, powerful, Pentecostal church in that country. I was in a baptismal service. That's the largest baptismal tank I've ever seen in my life. You can do your Olympic training in there. They baptized 199 that night. I rather facetiously said, you lost one. The pastor said, yeah, it's you, get in there. 
On the left there, you see a lady being baptized in Bangladesh through the ministry of Terry Bowen, who's right out of our province here, and the churches that Terry's working with. Terry was actually in that same, you can just see the top of his head there, but he was actually in that water. I said, Terry, you're a man of faith, because it wasn't very nice water, but he was in there. We baptized that day about 135 people in the country of Bangladesh, one of the largest Muslim Hindu countries in the world, reaching lost people wherever they are. You see, we just had G20 and G8 or whatever you call it here. And, and I recognize there's a place for that. Politicians get together and they talk about how to fix the world. And they do do good things. I don't want to denigrate anything they do. But I also know that unless you change the human hearts, not much really happens. But when you change a life, you can change a family. You bring the gospel of Jesus Christ into a child's life, and that child can transform their whole, their whole family. If you change a family, you can change a community. Change a community, you can change a nation. So we focus on reaching those people with the gospel of Jesus Christ, that they might come to know Him. The problem is that the God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers. There is an enemy that we are fighting against. And he blinds their minds so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that's the glory of Christ. But Jesus said to Paul, I'm sending you to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light from the power of Satan to God so that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith. Have a look at this video for a moment. This is 100,000 Muslim people in the country that Brian comes from and works in. Probably when you hear what country it is, you'll be surprised that there's that many Muslim people. They're praying in the street. I liken this to, to people who are, are feeling for the face of God. I was watching uh, David there with his little boy when he was up here at the front. Of a little boy, a little boy in your arms, and he's got his hand all over your face and all over your head, and, and there's an intimacy there between son and father that's absolutely wonderful. We can feel the face of God. God says, "I want to be your friend," and we sang about it tonight. These people are in their blindness trying to find God, but they can't find Him there. There's nothing but emptiness and darkness in that. They've exchanged the truth of the law for a lie, and there is no hope, there is no redemption, there is no transformation. And we need to pray that their eyes will be opened, that they might see the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's where Brian and Carrie are working. Pray for them and that country, that these people might find the true God, not the God they're seeking. So how are we going to do that? Well, one of the ways that we're trying to reach people in the world is we can't do it all by ourselves, as the Pentecostal saints can. One thing we